Jody is grooving. I'm feeling it cause it's gonna be. We're about to get it going. Our happiness is showing. We're rocking it cause it's gonna be. Great day. Great day in Houston. Great day. And now, here's your host, Deborah Duncan. <laughs> guest today has made a name for himself singing the classic songs of the Great American Songbook, but this Grammy Award winning singer got his start behind the mic producing for artists such as Diana Ross, Stevie Wonder, Rod Stewart, Christian Chenoweth, and Dionne Warwick, and a whole lot more. Welcome back home, Steve Tyrell to Great Day. Hey, baby. Aww. Thank you for having me. I, lo I love your theme song. Oh, thank you. Yeah. So good. Great day in Houston. Yes. I, you know, I, we love the fact Says that it all. <laughs> you grew up here, you went off to the big lights of the big city in L.A. and New York and around the world, really, but you always come back home. Well, my family's here. This is my home, really. Yeah. Everybody, uh, I'm not related to anybody in Los Angeles. <laughs> <laughs> but almost everybody here in Houston. I mean, yeah, yeah. I run right. to Johnny Caraba. He's like, yeah. that's my cousin. Oh, so yeah. That's my cousin. Oh, so. yeah. Uh, but, you know, a lot of folks uh, love your story, Steve, because you started out as a singer and in your teens. Mm -hmm. When did you first realize that music was something that was so passionate for you that you wanted to make a living at it? Uh, driving around in my mother's and father's car in the back seat. They, I, they used to have a... a you know those coat hangers that have the paper on them? Uh-huh. And I would... Oh, how funny. They sounded like a hi-hat. Yeah. You were playing music in the backseat of the car with a coat hanger. Yeah, right, right. Yeah. right. Yeah, eventually, I, at some I, point, you, you graduated to a keyboard, didn't you? No, no. I, no, I wanted to be a drummer. Okay. I, I wanted to be I wish I would have played piano, Yeah. I didn't know. All right. Well, I, I'm a coat hanger player. You're, <laughs> he's just making that up. All right. No, you, you, I swear to God, that's true. <laughs> you took off for, for New York City at a really young age. 19, yeah. And then you ended up with somebody who was like, just like, I mean, a, a god in the business of music, Burt Bacharach. Right. Well, he was there. That was a great. It was a great uh, education. It was like people ask me where I went to college. I say, Backrack and David University and Dion Warwick. I, uh, <laughs> you know, because it's true. They were there writing those great songs for Dion, and uh, and Valerie Simpson was there across the hall. She was starting out. Carol King was there with us. She was starting out. First song she wrote was for the Shirelles, "Will You Love Me Tomorrow." You know. Yeah. And it was a real, real place to be, you know. I couldn't have, couldn't have got a better college education. You were in the business. Yeah, so I started right. out as a singer, uh, yeah, I mentioned as a, as a teenager, but ended up doing composing and arranging and all those things. Um, one of the songs that you were a part of was with a friend of yours right here in Houston, B.J. Thomas. Right, well, B.J., I always thought was, the, he's the reason I wasn't singing in New York. I always thought B.J. was the best singer down here. And I told him when I got my job, I said, B.J., when I get up there, man, I'm going to tell them about you and see if I can't get you on the label. And I did. And the first song we ha had was I'm So Lonesome I Could Cry, which mm -hmm. was a number one record. Yeah. And then, of course, there was that song, Rain Drops the Fall. But, but that, that came along not next. I mean, then we had Hooked on a Feeling, which was written by Houston fellow Mark James, another friend of ours, and the eyes of a New York woman, and then raindrops keep falling on my head. And raindrops keep call, falling on my head. You all, you and BJ were at the Oscars. Right, and right. And you met another icon in this country, around the world, really, John Wayne the Duke. Well, we, we wanted, you know, BJ sang it on the Oscars, and he, he's never been, he said he was never more, he couldn't even watch it for 30 years. He was so scared. <laughs> uh, of it, but he was great. And, uh, we went afterwards to the party, and of course everybody knew who we were by then because the song won the Academy Award, and BJ had just sung it. So we were, yeah, so we were trying to get, like, pictures, and there was no selfies in those days. Yeah, right. So you'd have to have the photographer come, so we saw John Wayne, and uh, we said, uh, Mr. Wayne, can we take a picture? And he saw that it was BJ and me, but especially BJ, and he was drinking a malt, and he says, Waiter, and we thought we had like upset the guy, yeah. you know. 
Get rid of this and bring me two fifths of Jack Daniels. <laughs> <laughs> he didn't want to be seen drinking he, them all. He yeah. put him. He put them on the table. He says, "Okay, boys, now we can take the picture." Oh. <laughs> he didn't want to have his photograph with the guy who sang the Academy Award song yeah. while him with him uh, having a chocolate malt. The other thing we love about your story is that it kind of came full circle. Uh, you had done the arrangement for Father of the Bride, mm -hmm. and you did kind of, I guess, it's the scratch track, if you will. Yeah. Right? And they were like, "Okay, so we love the arrangement." You're like, "Good, cha ching," and they go, "And whoever's singing it, we love." that too double cha-ching well that, yeah <laughs> I said well that's me yeah you know. it kind of got you back why don't you get why again? don't you get Ray Charles or Rod Stewart <laughs> okay. they said no we want you to do it yeah and it got you back into singing it again. totally did yeah. uh, ten of your American standards albums have reached top five on the Billboard jazz charts and your current album a song for you is where number one number, made number one, one. <laughs> made number one isn't that amazing and every holiday season, you leave us for a minute to go to New York City, and you uh, perform at New York City's uh, Carlisle Cafe or, or Hotel. Is it Cafe Carlisle? Cafe Carlisle. All right, and you're it's currently my hosting year, yeah. a jazz and pop radio show on KKJZ in Los Angeles. All right, this is your 10th anniversary of your back-to-back -back album, and right. it's been a, kind of a, an additional release. Warner Brothers decided to release it on the 10th anniversary, and we added seven songs to it that we wished we would have done. You know, you couldn't do all of them, so now this is a 21 song uh, back rack special all his great songs and I'm excited by it. Yeah. It'll be out uh, next month. You're gonna sing a little bit for us this morning yeah. but if folks want to see him Steve will play the Stafford Center on Friday night at 8 p.m. Yeah, we have a come. link yeah I'll be out there I love it I'm gonna introduce you I have such great things to say about you okay we have a link to tickets on our site greatdayhouston.com but now here's Steve with say a little prayer for you. Yeah. This song was originally recorded by Dionne Warwick, but I want to send it out to the Queen of Soul, wherever she is, Aretha Franklin. She had a wonderful version of this song. The moment I wake up, before you put on your makeup, I say a little prayer for you. Together, together, that's how it must be to live without 
together, together. That's how it must be to live without you would only mean heartbreak for me.